everybody. Welcome to today's live makeup class. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Julie Christine. I'm a professional hair and makeup artist. And today my beautiful model is Alani and we're so happy to have her here. I'm happy to be here. Yay! So today's tutorial is going to be fun. I wanted to do a live class with you guys um, to show you how I do makeup on deeper skin tones. So we're going to do full face. The only thing we have done prior to starting is skin prep and brows. So I'm gonna show you guys how I like to use multiple shades to get a really beautiful, even complexion. And then I think we're gonna do the new Natasha Denona bronze palette on the eyes. So today is gonna be fun. <laughs> and Alani just told me before we started that she's like never worn makeup before. Nope. Just <laughs> mascara one time? One time. Okay, yeah. this is gonna be so fun, I'm excited. So we're gonna do, I mean, we're gonna do a full face. So we'll see. I think we're she'll love it though. It. <laughs> we're gonna go for it. We're gonna do a natural glam. I'm gonna show you guys all of the steps. It's gonna be fun. So we'll start with the eyes on Alani today. Um, so I really love the Natasha Denona bronze palettes. It just, it's the perfect amount of warm shades. We have some matte, some shimmer. So these will look really pretty on Alani today. So I'm gonna start with a large fluffy blending brush and we're gonna go ahead and go, I'm gonna hold it up by Alani's face so you guys can see in the camera. We're gonna use the shade Ridge for our crease color. I think um, the amount of warmth on the, in this color will look really pretty on Alani's skin tone today. Um, and I did prime her eyelids with Tarte Shape Tape prior to starting. Um, so I just wanna make sure that that's not creasing this, the shape tape actually dries fairly matte. I've noticed that so sometimes I set it with the translucent powder on the lid, which I think I'll do a little bit of that today, but sometimes I just go right into it. So one thing I've noticed with working on deeper, medium to deep skin tones is you just want to be aware of the undertones in your colors. Generally things with um, a warmer undertone are going to look the most flattering because things can tend to go ashy if they're too cool. That being said, you absolutely can use cool tone eyeshadows and do any look you want. Um, but I have found just for like a natural everyday look, these shadows perform the best. So this shadow, I mean, looking at it in the pan, it's kind of like a mustard orange, I would say, but it's coming across very pretty. It's like the perfect crease color for Alani. Alani, I'm honestly so excited you've never worn makeup before. This is going to be so fun. Are you doing anything today? Um, Do no, work? probably just going to hang out after this. <laughs> awesome. You'll have to message me and tell me what everyone says. I know my dad will probably think it's so weird. And my boyfriend. <laughs> like, what is wrong with your face? Oh, it's my makeup. gosh. <laughs> You're like, it's totally fun. Your boyfriend will have to take you out. <laughs> I know, now I have to do something. Now you have to go somewhere. You'll be so glam. <laughs> so I zoomed in really high, uh, close to her eyes, Jewel. Okay. So if you show up makeup, they can't put see it. In it. Front of her face. Okay. Or so do you guys, we're live right now for those of you that are new. Um, and so Kelly, my amazing camera woman slash producer, she can change the angles for you guys. So she just zoomed in a little bit so you guys can kind of see what we're doing a little bit better. Um, but if you want her to zoom out or whatever, let us know. Um, okay, so basically what I'm doing, this is just my transition shade. So where I want it, looking at Alani's pretty bone structure and her eye space and stuff like that, what I want to do is just define her eyes. I want to keep this look natural. So what I'm doing is I'm... Um, initially placing my color right here on the outer corner because that's where I want the most depth to be. And once I sort of blend it out there, I'm going to um, flick it outward a little bit because I do want to extend the eyes upward, give that really pretty sort of cat eye effect. Um, and then because Alani has a nice lid space right here and I'm going to do a little bit of contouring, I also want to bring this color up and sort of into the eyebrow. So we're almost doing like a little arch right here and it's you can flick it out towards the nose if you want like I do want some depth right there just to give the eyes a beautiful open look so that's what we're doing it's very light like this looks super super natural I'm gonna have you open Alani but you can already kind of see like this eyes just a little bit more defined like so natural you almost can't even wear tell she's wearing that crease color but it just sort of gives shape to the eyes I really like Alani's pretty almond eyes so we're just gonna sort of work with that so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So 
So you've not, so you're just not a makeup girl. Have you ever been like, oh, it sounds fun, I want to try it, or are you just kind of like, whatever? No, like I watch like some videos about it, but like I've never just like, mm, I'm gonna try this today. Like, I've just never wanted to really like just put it on because it always seems so hard to. Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> you know, you're saving a lot of time, <laughs> not wearing any. And you honestly are just stunning. You don't need it. I mean, nobody really needs it, but. <laughs> I love, you know what? Maybe we'll flash. Um, Kelly took a before video of Alani, and I want to show you guys how I did her brows really quick while I'm doing this step. Alani has really pretty natural brows, and I didn't want to do a really sculpted look on her brows today because they're fuller naturally, and I love that. And I feel like with um, more naturally full brows, if you go in really heavy with your defining, they just look a little harsh. And I'm glad I didn't since I just found out Alani doesn't wear makeup. It would have been way too much <laughs> for her if I had really gone in with like a sculpted brows. So what I did is I just took the Anastasia Brow Wiz I still have her shade pulled out in the shade dark brown and I drew hair. So I just went with her natural shape and you can almost see probably because Kelly zoomed in and we're shooting in 4K, you can probably see all the exact little flicks I did. So we literally drew in hairs and then I went in um, with the Anastasia brow palette. This is the pro palette. So it has all of Anastasia shades, but you can buy the individual shades for personal use. So I used, um, the powder called ebony and i use the lighter shade in it just to sort of um buff in over those hair strokes just to sort of set it and give it a little bit of dimension especially under these lights when um brows to me when i'm filming in my studio lights if i go too light with them you guys don't see like it doesn't translate on camera the way it does in person but that's what i did okay so i'm loving the way this is looking right now Okay, so that is stunning. Um, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna add in a couple more shades, but we truly could be done with that crease color and just do some liner, maybe some shimmer on the lid or something like that and be done. But let's, let's do a couple more steps on the eyes. So I'm gonna go into this color. This is called Suntan. So this is just like a burnt orange, matte sort of coppery color. Okay, I'm gonna have Alani close. And again, wherever you initially place your brush, so you're gonna dip your brush into the powder and wherever you initially place the brush is where you're gonna get the most color payoff. And I want the most depth to be right near Alani's lash line. And so that's where I'm gonna start. If you start in the middle, you have like sort of a blob of color there. If you start over here, you'll have more, more color there. So generally for the looks that I do, I like more color to be over in this corner. But depending on the eye shape, um, you do want balance. So I am, with Alani, I am gonna make sure I have color up in this corner too. And just basically wanna be mindful of where you're placing your colors. Just to help yourself out. If you initially start in an area and put so much product, it's just gonna be tricky to blend out. But if you start in an area like that where you want it really dark anyways, then it's easy for yourself. So same thing on the other side. And so far, these are all mattes. We haven't done any shimmer yet, but I think we will today. This bronze palette has such beautiful shimmers. So I think it will be fun to try one of them today. And again, this is definitely a warmer tone, but depending on the natural skin tone where that you place the eyeshadows, they're gonna look different on everybody. And these warm tones are so stunning on Al Alani. They're coming across very natural. So they sort of are going to, this palette actually like looks great with Alani's top. Like it almost mm. has like your oh, cranberry yeah. color in it. <laughs> you knew. You were inspired. I was prepared. Yes. We were like on the same vibe, the same wavelength with exactly. that. Exactly. Let me turn you forward a little bit. What colors do you tend to wear, Alani? Um, Mostly like colors like this, like, the darker like maroons or like sometimes like if I'm feeling like a little safe then I can wear white mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's very rare because I don't want to get them dirty at work and stuff like yeah. that yeah that makes sense 
It's very pretty on you, the like rich sort of maroon color. Thank you. Okay, so I love the way that is looking. Super pretty, still very natural. Um, let's go in with a shimmer and then I might, I'll do liner and then we'll kind of see if we want to apply more shadow. I'm also going to do a lash today too, which I'm excited about. Okay, so let's go ahead and go in. I think I'm going to use this shade. Are we still zoomed in, Kelly? Maybe let's zoom out for a second. So I'm going to use this shade. I actually don't want to try to pronounce it because I don't know how to say it. <laughs> so it's just, it's the most neutral shimmer in this palette. So there's a lot of really beautiful gold, gold tones and coppers. We have this sort of pink one, but I'm going to hold this up by Alani's face so you guys can see. This is the most neutral shimmer right now because I want this look to be fairly natural and these colors are looking very natural on Alani. So... For this look, I don't want like a bright copper lid, although that would be stunning. So <laughs> I'm going to take a flat brush. So this is a flat synthetic brush. I'm going to have you close and I'm just going to use this brush to swipe the pigment across the lid. And this is really pretty. I like this shade. So the reason I'm choosing a flat brush is because it's going to help the pigment slide onto the skin. If I was to use a buffing brush, like a fluffy brush, like I was doing on other areas of the eyes, the, this shimmer wouldn't be as shiny. Another good trick if you want your shimmers to be shinier and more metallic is to get your brush wet. See how I'm like swiping it over her lid? It's just creating this beautiful shiny shimmer effect. Okay, go ahead and open for me. So pretty. And you know what? I might, I think near her lid, near her eyes, I think I might add a little bit of moisture to the brush so that we're a little bit shinier there. But I like how natural this is looking. But it's good when you guys have a palette and you have metallics and shimmers, the brush you use to apply them, and if you do it wet or dry, things like that, it can look like a whole new eyeshadow. So you can get so many looks and so many finishes and textures from the same product. Okay, so let me show you what I like to do. So this is called Max Fix Plus. You can use water, but this is a good product. So I just spray it on my brush and go back into that same color. I'm just gonna put this right in the middle of her lid so that gives it sort of that halo effect. Go ahead and open for me. But see how pretty that eye is? It just sort of glistens in the middle. <laughs> Are your friends into makeup, Alani? A lot of them, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and they've never been like, let's do your makeup. They have, I just, you say no. <laughs> well, I'm honored you're letting me today. <laughs> this is so fun. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna do a gel liner today. Okay. I want to define her eyes. So we're gonna take out a little bit of this. This is Anasaja. This is the waterproof cream color in the shade Jet. So this is a matte black. So we're just gonna use this too lightly to define her eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna have you actually open and then look down at the brush for me and I'm gonna lift your lid and this might feel weird since you've never really played with eye makeup but I'm just gonna draw right under the lashes and you can blink a couple times. You can blink while I'm doing this if you need to. <laughs> it won't mess me up. Okay, and if you guys are in the live chat, hello and welcome. We're so happy to have you. I'm gonna pull it up on my phone. So if you guys have any questions, you can go ahead and drop them in the chat. I'm just gonna refresh my screen really quick. One second, I'm gonna get it to reload. Okay, if you guys have any questions, say hello, my phone is loading. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda turn your head and again have you look down at the brush and I'm gonna lift your lid. So it helps to look down so that you're not watching the brush come at your eye. Because <laughs> that's, yeah, that's not the most comfortable. So that's what I always 
have my clients do just wherever my brush is going to come for eyeliner I just have them look in the opposite direction so I'm going to have Alani for this part look down at the brush and then over this way and then I can come in on this inner corner and it's going to be a little bit more comfortable for her <laughs> still may be weird it's yeah. <laughs> you're doing really good for never having like <laughs> your eyes prodded and honestly, your eyes might start to water. I've noticed like working on clients that really just don't wear makeup or haven't had their makeup done. It's just like a natural, like their eyes tend to water when you play with them, even yeah. if you're gentle, like that's super normal. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do with Alani, look down again for me. After I do this part of the eyeliner, we'll see if I need to move on to another part of the face, I will. Okay, go ahead and look over that way. Perfect. Okay, open for me. Good. You can close. Okay, so what that did, that's called tight lining. So when you come in with the eyeliner and you go underneath the lashes, it makes them look thicker and fuller, and it gives the eyes really pretty definition. I call it little Barbie princess eyes. Like, it just <laughs> makes the eyes look so pretty, but because you're going under the lashes, it, it's like the no makeup makeup. It makes it look super natural. It just looks like you have a pretty thick lash line. So it's a really great tip for natural looking makeup. Okay, I'm gonna have you open for me and look straight forward. And I'm gonna flick this outward a little bit. Go ahead and close. Perfect. So I like to have people open and look forward if I'm doing a little bit of a wing at all because then you can see where the wing is going to be placed. Mm -hmm. When people close their eyes or they look you know, over or down or whatever, it changes the eye shape, like the lid shape. So looking for it is best. Okay, go ahead and close. And I'm gonna switch brushes actually. So this is the Anastasia brush. This is actually a brow brush, but I love it for eyeliner and tight lining because it's very, very narrow and very sort of sharp, if you will, not sharp where like the point is really skinny and firm. So I can get a nice precise line. And then if I wanna do a little bit of a thicker line of liner on the top, I'll switch to a fluffier angle brush. So this is the small angle brush by Sigma. Do a nice line of liner. And I know I'm going to do lashes on Alani. Um, the size I picked for her before we started, they're fluffy and they're like a medium density. So since they have a little bit of fullness, I know that I can do um, like a thicker line of eyeliner and it's going to look really natural because of the lashes. So go ahead and open again for me. Perfect. Okay, close again. So same thing on this side. So you've never worn foundation or anything, just the mascara? Yeah. So fun. And then I never let my friend do it again because she poked my eye. <laughs> oh, she did poke your eye. So you were traumatized. <laughs> so I'm like coming at you with a brush and you're like having flashbacks. So she did try to do your makeup, but she poked you? Mm -hmm. She was doing eyeliner? Yeah, she was going to try to do eyeliner, but she just did the mascara at first. Oh, and you're like, no, we're yeah. done. You're said, cut no, off. No, I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm no good more. no more. <laughs> okay, go ahead and look straight ahead. Perfect. Well, I promise not to poke you. <laughs> okay, go ahead and close for me. Good. So again, I had her look forward, and I'm just trying to match up my little wings. And this is my sharp brush again. So this is my detailed eyeliner brush that I like to use. So I use that for my little details, and then I'll come in with the Sigma brush, and I'll do my more thick lines okay go ahead and open all right so what i'm going to do is i am we're going to switch palettes because i want to use a black in the natasha denona palette she does she has a almost black but it's sort of like a duochrome like it's like black with flecks of like a reddish shimmer and stuff in it so i want a matte black so i am going to go into this NARS palette. Let's see if I like this black today. Okay. Um, no. <laughs> Not. 
Okay, let's do Viseart. So we're gonna use, Viseart has a really great matte black. This is the Viseart Matte Neutrals in number one. This is just such a great palette if you're a makeup artist or if you like new tones for personal use because all the colors are mattes and they're all exactly what you need, like the different undertones to get sort of any natural look. They're just really good base colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a clean angled brush go into that black color and we're just going to set Alani's liner today. Go ahead and close. We're just going to go over exactly everything we've already done with this matte black. And this will just help set the color so that it stays all day. And then there's two things you can do with the liner. You can go ahead and leave it like this with more of a defined line or you can go ahead and top this color with like a lighter black or a brown and it, you can diffuse out this line so it's a little bit softer and that's what we're going to do on Alani today. Go ahead and open and look forward and look over to this way for me. Perfect. Come into the tear duct. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay if you blink for sure. Okay, go ahead and look that way. Good. Okay, go ahead and close. All right, so now we're gonna diffuse it. So I'm going to go, I think I'm gonna mix a couple things. Let's see, I'm gonna go back to this NARS palette for a second, because there's a brown in here I really, okay. So this is the NARS palette, and they have a really, really dark brown. This is the um, Skin Deep palette, and I actually think this is limited edition, but you can use any really deep matte brown for this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab a shader brush. Let's see. Okay, we're gonna use this one. So this is like a really dense short shader brush and I'm gonna go into that color. I'm gonna have Alani close and I'm just gonna go over the eyeliner and I'm really gently gonna flick it up. So what I'm just doing is blurring the eyeliner line. So now instead of being a really defined sharp liner, now it's like buffed and soft around the edges. And this is a really great trick to do both black and brown because it's really gonna give the illusion of a nice blended blurred liner using those two colors. It works better than just going in with a black and trying to buff that out because the black is a little bit more harsh. You're gonna get that blended line a lot more seamlessly using a very dark deep brown. And this brown is very neutral. We were doing nice warm tones on her eyes, but this is just a neutral brown, which is gonna look good with that black. And be careful when you get to the little wing. So when you get to the tip, I actually don't, I stop blurring it right before I get to the tip because a blurred wing would look kind of weird in most cases. Okay, let's go ahead and put on the lashes. So these lashes are so pretty. They're natural, but they're still like really full and voluminous. So these are the Ardell. I'm going to open them because we're going to get the glare of the lights. These are the doubled up. These are 113. So they remind me a lot of the Dummy Whiskies, but stacked and longer. So I'm going to hold them up by Alani so you guys can see. I'm still zoomed in. You're zo zoom out. Actually, you can stay zoomed in for this part. So we're going to apply these lashes. I'm going to grab some glue. We're going to do clear glue on Alani just because her eyes, just in case they water or she wants to sort of flutter them or anything, the clear is going to be a lot more seamless. Hi, Lynn. Okay, people are saying that they like they like Kelly's zoom. Good. So Kelly's <laughs> going to stay zoomed in while we do the lashes, just so you can see the application, and then we'll zoom out because then we'll do we'll move on to complexion. Go ahead and look down, yeah. Open for me. Look kind of up. Good, look down. Perfect. Okay, what I'm gonna do with these lashes is I'm gonna tr maybe trim them a little bit more. So a lot of people, and Alani, when, um, when your eyes are closed, sometimes mm -hmm. the lash line will co sort of come in a little bit more. So when you're putting on the lashes, they could poke you if you don't cut them short enough and they look a lot different with eyes open versus eyes closed. So 
we're gonna, I did trim these before we started and I'm gonna put them on and we'll kind of see. I might add some individual lashes in the inner corner. So you've never worn lashes. Never. <laughs> this will be fun. So the false lashes, when I put them on you, they're mm -hmm. gonna feel like super weird. Like you're mm -hmm. gonna be very aware of them. But once <laughs> the glue dries, they're very comfortable. Okay. So you'll get used to it. Give it like 10 minutes and then you'll be like, okay, this is fine. This is okay. <laughs> yes, but they feel weird at first. Mm -hmm. So this is the last thing I'll do on your eyes and then we'll move on to face and we'll come okay. back to the eyes. So get a little eye break no, <laughs> from, being, <laughs> from being poked and prodded. Okay, and you wanna make sure your glue is dried enough. And I'm kind of kind of fan along you too. You can close <laughs> your eyes right now if you need to kind of dry. She's she's really not watering bad, just slightly, slightly. Mm -hmm. And so I want that to be all the way dry. So I'm gonna fan her and I'm gonna fan these lashes. Cause any moisture is like the Achilles heel of lash glue. <laughs> if you try to put lashes on and your eyes have watered at all, it's like game over. <laughs> like you just have to take not a break. Gonna it's not gonna <laughs> happen. And I actually, I know a lot of you guys watching like either want to try lashes and are new to it or have struggles. Alani, I'm going to have you open, but look down for me. Perfect. And stay like that. You can blink if you need to. And I think, so back to like learning how to do lashes. I think when people try, you're like poking at your eye and it's totally going to make your eyes water the first time you do it. And so I think it's frustrating because people keep trying. But if your eyes water and you're putting on lashes, like totally take a break, like let your eyes dry all the way. <laughs> okay, you can blink as much as you need to, Alani, but I don't want you to stay closed until that's dry so your eye doesn't get stuck together. That would not be fun. <laughs> <laughs> we can fix it, but it would not be good. Okay, so we're going to go on to the other side. These are so pretty. <laughs> I love them already. It's looking I so good. I am completely aware of them, though. <laughs> right? Yeah, they're, like, very much there. Mm -hmm. We'll put mascara on them too once they dry all the way and that helps blend your natural lashes into the extensions and they, they look a little bit better. Okay. Okay, go ahead and look down for me. I'm gonna add a little bit more glue right on this inner corner. So go ahead and open and look down, good. But yeah, being aware of them is like the best way I feel like to describe them. It's like, they're definitely there, but you'll get used to them. Okay, so we'll let this dry. So for beginners, clear blue is or clear lash glue is really good because um, it looks white and sort of bluish when you first apply it on the band, but as it starts to disappear, you will know that it's about ready to put on. So it's kind of helpful to have that visual. Okay, look down again for me. When we tested these lashes before we started, producer Kelly said Alani looks like Brandy once we put the lashes <laughs> on. Brandy's beautiful. Okay. Perfect. So keep kind of looking down. Um, so one thing to note when the lashes are drying, what I see happening the most is this inner corner starts to lift off. So I'm gonna fan Alani and just keep an eye on that inner corner. And if I need to, I'm gonna just push it right up against the lid. Depending on the client or, I mean, obviously you can do this to yourself depending on how you feel about it. Sometimes like as the glue eye dries, I will constantly be like pushing the lash up against the lid. But for Alani, I really don't wanna prod at her eyes <laughs> unless I have to. So I'm just gonna visually keep an eye on them and just fan her. How you doing? Good. Good. <laughs> I feel like you're so sweet. If you were not doing good, you probably wouldn't <laughs> tell me. She's like, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's I'm okay. doing fine. <laughs> no, I tried to be gentle. I hope you are doing good. I am. Like the the weight of it feels like a little bit weird because mm -hmm. I've never had it before, but it feels fine. <laughs> good. Yeah, they'll start. They definitely will start to feel normal, especially once we get that mascara on. So pretty, but like, look how look, you can go ahead and look forward. Like, just look how much that opened up her pretty, pretty eyes. And they'll blend a little bit more once we put on the mascara. Okay, Alani, if you need to close now, you can. But okay. just make sure you're, you're kind of fluttering every once in a while so you don't get glued shut. They're almost dry. The lash glue actually takes 
quite a bit to set like although it may dry pretty quick it I like to give it like five minutes before I go in with mascara or really touch it at all so we're gonna go in with skin so I'm gonna teach you guys kind of what I like to do so looking at Alani she has really pretty natural variation in her skin color um, which is great and that probably helps her not wear makeup because she already <laughs> has like that like when I contour and stuff my face, it's like she kind of naturally has that. So what I'm going to do is use a couple. I pulled a couple different foundation shades for her. So I'm going to use different ones on different areas of her face. And that will help it look really natural. So what I'm going to do, this this is all NARS um, Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. So I like the coverage this gives. I'm just going to do a very light layer of it. Um, so this is going to be my deepest shade. And I'm going to do this on the perimeter of her face a lot of times with many of us our forehead is naturally darker than the rest of our face and so if i was to put like this color is going to be kind of her all over color but if i was to put this right on her forehead it would look too light and it would look sort of ashy and off so i'm going to choose a darker color for that initial initial blend so i'm going to start with the darker one and then kind of move into my lighter colors so we're going to go in with this and this is in the shade um deep number two and we'll see. I sort of was swatching them on her a little bit before we started, but I might need to sort of alter them live. So we'll see if this one's a little... Nope, this one is looking super great. So I'm going to turn Alani kind of to the side so you guys can see. My studio lights are pretty bright, so some of the areas on her face are a little reflective. And we might need to zoom out now, Kelly, to our normal. Maybe she already did. Okay, so I'm just going to go in with to the perimeter. So this is going to be... It's slightly darker than her natural skin tone in these areas because I want to do a little bit of contouring. I'm going to highlight with concealer, so I want to use my foundation shade to help me contour. So I'm just going to go into those areas where I naturally would contour, kind of around the face. Perfect. Go in on this side. Turn on a little bit more so you guys can see. NARS um, is very fantastic with their undertones. I find that all the shade range when I'm working on very light skin, medium skin, deep skin, dark skin, um, I really love all the undertones in the foundation. And that's not true across the board for all brands, but with this foundation, like this shade on Alani, I'm not needing to mix in a medium. Um, for those of you guys that are makeup artists, I like to carry in my kit um, adjusters, so like, reds, orange, a blue, and so that if my actual foundation isn't matching their skin tone and mixing just the foundations isn't doing it for me, you can actually add in the color you need to match their undertone. But I have found that since I've been using the NARS foundations, I don't really ever have to do that. Like I'll mix the foundations themselves, but I don't need to mix in my medium really ever. You're going to be so fancy, Alonzi. You'll definitely <laughs> have to have your boyfriend take you out for sure. Okay, so um, before I get into her her shade and then the lighter shades, I am going to brighten up some areas around her mouth. So this is the Makeup Forever Just Correcting Palette. So we're going to use a burgundy color just to sort of brighten some areas. So I like to do that with a flat brush. So this is a flat synthetic brush. Just gonna go around the mouth a little bit. And this is where most girls and women will occasionally need some color correcting. Mm -hmm. And this probably is not necessary for every day, but Since we're doing a fairly full coverage look, I'll show, show you guys the extra steps that I sometimes will do. Well, Melissa says, wow, those lashes are beautiful on her, <laughs> right? These Thank are you. like the lash for her. So Ardell doubled up. The Ardell doubled up lashes are just magic. They're so pretty. 
I've really loved them because they're still quite natural. Like these aren't super, super full, but they're definitely like, (laughs) I mean, obviously more than she's ever worn before, but they're wearable. Like it's still like a good day lash, if you will. And then also just a note for you guys, I like to do eyes first. And then before I do this under eye concealer, I'm going to clean up under the eyes. I'm actually going to do that right now. Um, but if, if the client has sensitive eyes or honestly, all I, I'm making it seem like she was really watery. She wasn't, but if they are (laughs) a little bit like I will just leave the eyes alone and then I'll come and clean up later when it's more necessary. So I'm going to clean up under her eyes right now. So go ahead and look forward for me, like straight ahead. Perfect. So I'm just going to sort of like wing out the shadow a little bit. And then come back in and clean under the eyes. And I probably will come and do a little bit more shadow under the eyes too after we get the concealer on. I might even do a little bit of it now before we do the concealer. I actually like when a little bit of the eyeliner transfers to the bottom because it gives like a very natural looking shadow and I think it's pretty. You can blink and close a couple times. I'm going to grab one more. Okay, go ahead and look forward. I feel like lashes are the things people love most when they've never, like, worn makeup before. And they (laughs) look at it. They're always most excited about the lashes. (laughs) And then the brows. So I'm excited for you to see. Okay, so I'm just going to get that cleaned up. And you just want to make sure you get rid of all of that, um darker color the the eyeliner basically because if you leave any like sometimes it looks like it's gone Mm -hmm. but what I do is like I'll switch my pad away to the clean side and then do another swipe and see if there's any on the pad because if you leave any it can look like a dark shadow and then you have to color correct that which Mm -hmm. if it just can wipe off you might as well do it that way instead of (laughs) trying to add more makeup and then I really love these teeny teeny little q-tips they're like just so tiny. I'm going to have you look forward and just kind of clean out the inner tear duct area, but these are really great for detail work. Getting little things in the tear duct. Okay, you can go ahead and close if you need to or blink or whatever. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of eyeshadow under the eyes and then we'll go in with the concealer and we'll probably add more eyeshadow on top. So I'm going to go in with this color this color called Ridge. This was her initial crease color. So this just looks like a really pretty sort of shade of makeup. So I'm gonna have you look up for me. Just come under the eye. Come all the way in near the tear duct area. Perfect. I'm just gonna bring that all the way in. This is a shader brush, so I'm going to just smudge it out. Okay, go ahead and look forward. Perfect. So that just gave us a nice little shadow for now. Okay, so now I'm going to go in. This is medium deep 3.3. So this is going to be kind of her all over shade. I might mix these two. I'm going to see what this looks like when I put it on her skin. That's looking good. So this is going to be sort of her all over tone and then we're going to do a lighter shade as we get in near the eyes. So you want to blend all of the tones in the face together and then you want to make sure the neck matches too. So sometimes I'll go down the neck a little bit. How does the foundation feel? Does it feel okay? Yeah. That's another thing that's different if you've never really worn makeup before. It's like you're very aware of the foundation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this one has a pretty good finish. It's it's a medium to full coverage, but yeah. it doesn't feel as heavy as some can. Yeah, like right now it just feels kind of like moisturizer. Mm-hmm. Like a thicker like moisturizer. Oh, good. So it feels like not too heavy. Mm-hmm. We did some skin prep on Alani before we started. So while, while I'm doing this foundation, since it's pretty self-explanatory what I'm doing. (laughs) I'll kind of tell you guys what we did. So I did a little bit of the Sonia Roselli Sex Appeal. I'll show you guys. So this is a topical exfoliant. You just spray it. You can spray it directly on the face, but I 
for face, I always spray it in my hands and then I just sort of lightly massage their face. And it's just a very gentle exfoliant, so it's not irritating at all. It works for every skin type. I've never had anyone have a problem with it because it is so gentle, but it performs really, really well. It gives a nice exfoliant. And then um, I wanted a tad bit more of an exfoliant, so I had Alani go in the bathroom and she used the Ole Hendrix scrub another exfoliant and I don't usually double exfoliate but I could tell with Alani's skin type that it could handle it like she didn't seem to be sensitive or anything like that and because the Sonia Roselli one is so gentle I had her do the Ole Hendrix and her skin was like magical when you came out of the bathroom <laughs> it was like so soft and soft so and smooth yeah and then it absorbed the moisturizer really well so I did um, some more of the Sony Roselli products on her after the double exfoliant. We did um, water elixir, a little bit of oil, just just like in these little areas that I felt were dry, these two. And then we did this water balm moisturizer. And it was a great combo. I feel like it gave her skin a really nice finish. Yeah, I know. It felt really nice. Just like rubbing my skin right there, like it felt moisturized and like nice. I liked it. Yeah, it was. And I really liked hydrating. that exfoliator. It's a good one. I'll maybe take a picture at the end if you wanted to get some. Yeah. Okay, so this is a brightening concealer. So I'm gonna brighten the center of her face. That's like all about skin prep and people are so surprised um, like how their skin feels just from mm -hmm. using a couple products like that. And we were chatting before too. You asked me if you were more oily mm -hmm. or more dry. And I feel like um, all skin can, it benefits from like light exfoliation. Yeah. But I feel like sometimes, um, skin can feel dry depending on the products you're using but it really is like or it can feel oily but it's because it actually needs moisturizer mm -hmm. and it's like sort of thirsty skin and so it's just producing more oil to try to help out and then to compensate mm -hmm. for it exactly but i was telling alani too i felt like once we exfoliated her her skin was able to absorb those moisturizers so well that mm -hmm. it it's really nice Especially since I don't wear makeup that often, like I'm always about like the products that I use to like clean my face and like daily use for my face and just try to figure out like what kind of skin I have and like kind of how to treat it and get rid of some of those bumps. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you have great skin. Thank you. I think it's helpful. I feel like when people don't wear makeup mm -hmm. every day, they tend to have more, <laughs> like, nicer skin, like, better texture. Mm -hmm. So it's good. I feel like there's a heavy trend right now gravitating more towards skincare as a priority versus, like, makeup products and stuff mm -hmm. like that, which is awesome. It's good to take care of your skin. Especially starting young. Okay, so I'm just highlighting with this. I'm going under the eyes. I'm going to let that sort of set, and then I'm going to buff it up more under the eyes. I'm going to have you look up a little bit, Alani. Just really lightly going to tap under the eyes. She doesn't need much coverage at all under there, so I just want a little bit of that brightening color. Okay, so now I'm going to have, I already went on the chin. We're going to go on the outside of the mouth a little bit. I'm going to go down the bridge of the nose. So this concealer is going to be my lightest. It's probably two or three shades lighter than her um, her skin tone. But I'm choosing one light like that because we're going to do, we're using it to highlight. So I'm going to go down the bridge of the nose and then a little bit on the forehead just to brighten that area. Okay, and this is the shade Tan. So two, no, not two base, Tarte, Shape Tape, and the shade Tan. Okay, so now that that's on, I'm going to take this beauty sponge. I'm going to flip it to a side that's clean that I haven't really used yet. And just buff that out. 
And then I'm going to do the under eyes last. So a tip for you guys, if you are wanting to brighten the under eye area, if you let the concealer sit a little bit before you go in to blend it, it will look brighter. If you go ahead and start blending it right away with the beauty sponge or brush or whatever, um, the brush will take to the product and it will sort of buff it off. It will be more of like a sheer coverage. So you'll see me on my tutorials doing both. If I want a very natural under eye, I'm going to be blending it as I apply it. I'm not going to let it sit on. I'm not going to bake it or anything like that. But if I want to brighten a little bit more dramatically, then I'm going to let the product sit and get slightly tacky before I go in and buff it out. Okay, go ahead and open for me. Look up. Good. How you doing? Good. Good. Okay. down the sides of the nose. <laughs> My puppy. <laughs> I feel like it's an Amazon package or something. He gets so excited <laughs> when someone comes to the door. I have like a little white fluffy Pomeranian. He loves Gus. He was okay. very welcoming. <laughs> he was very, he loved Alani. She came and he was like, oh man, I'm so excited. It's like, sorry, I'm not coming to play with you today. <laughs> I know. He was sad when he went upstairs. I really couldn't say. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Siri thinks we're, I don't know if you guys heard Siri's like, I couldn't say. <laughs> I feel like I don't even have my Siri turned on. Oh, maybe it was yours. I think she feels left out. <laughs> <laughs> All the smartphones. Honestly, though, there's, like, nothing creepier than one of your smart devices starts to talk to you. Like, I know. We have an Alexa and a Google in our bedroom, and we just use the Google. Mm -hmm. But, like, every once in a while, Alexa, like, we will be saying nothing, and she'll be like, I couldn't hear that or something. And we're like, <laughs> excuse us, we weren't yeah. even talking. My brother has an Alexa, and <laughs> he likes to play games with it. Okay. So when he's not home, or if I'm not home, he'll put it in my room before he leaves and goes somewhere. Oh, no. And then when you're not home, you can still control it from your phone. Oh, that's and funny. And he'll start playing random things from it, and it creeps me out. Oh, so creepy. Ours did that once, but it wasn't. I mean, it's only me and my husband mm -hmm. and the baby but she doesn't do it <laughs> but it she's not like, gonna play games <laughs> she's not gonna play games and it was like playing some really creepy song like all of a sudden and i'm like alexa what are you oh, playing no. and like wouldn't tell me <laughs> very creepy okay so i there's like a two little areas i want a little bit more coverage um and so what i did was i took that maroon color corrector and i just applied it right there and then right on the side of the nose we're gonna let that sit for a second and then i'm gonna top it again with that tart shape because Sharp, tart shave tape concealer. <laughs> then do one more layer, and then I'm trying to decide what I want to do for blush. I really love on deeper skin tones. I love berry tones. They're so pretty. So I actually think I might do this one. This is the Milk Makeup in the shade Quickie, and it's really pretty. It's a beautiful color. It'll look really. It'll pair really well with your sweater and stuff like that. So I think we'll do that. Yeah. It's like the Christmassy like. Sweaters yes. to pair with it. <laughs> it's perfect. That holiday vibe. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay, so we're just going to top that. So letting that corrector sit slightly is going to help it be tacky. And then we're just going to top it with this tart shape tape, but we're, we're not going to buff it too much or you're going to lift up the layers of product. So, Okay, perfect. That's looking good. I'm going to go back over it with this brush. Sort of set it. Okay, perfect. That's looking so good. Okay, so this, we're going to go ahead and do that. This is a cream blush, which I love cream and liquid blushes. So we're going to apply this. So I'm going to use a little metal spatula to scrape some of it off. And Milk Makeup has really, really good um, cream cheek tints. They're really nice. So this is a multi product. So you can do this on um lips and cheeks which is fun and i'm just going to apply it with my finger 
And this product, it almost reminds me kind of the texture of like a Vaseline or something like that. It's like has some shine to it, which I like. It gives the skin like this really pretty dewy look. And I don't want it to, I want this look to be like a little bit more bronzy than like berry. So I'm not going to do a ton of blush probably, but I really like this tone. So I'm going to, I'll tilt her so you guys can see. But it just has the best finish. If you tap it in with your finger, the heat from your finger is just going to melt it into the skin and it's going to look perfect. Such a good shade. This is like the perfect fall berry color. Okay, I'm going to turn you this way. Perfect. So you guys can see. So just sort of start tapping it on with my finger just in the middle of the area I want it to be. And then as I get it blended out there, I'll start moving outward. But same with eyes, guys. Wherever you start touching first with the product is where it's going to be the most vibrant. So you want that to be where you want it to be the most bright. Which seems like common sense, right? But I think like as we're doing our own makeup and stuff, you just kind of tend to get lazy or you're trying to be quick with it and you don't mm -hmm. think about those things. But it's helpful. Okay, perfect. Love the way that is looking. Get a little bit on the apples, just a tad. Okay, so pretty. All right, now I am going to, I think we'll do a lip product and then I'll add a little bit more to the eyes and then we'll do some highlighter, which is so fun. Um, for the lips, I am going to do, I'm going to try sort of a nude and we'll see how that looks. And then if I don't love the nude vibe, then we'll go in with like more of a berry lip to match the cheeks. Okay. I think I'm going to mix the tail. We'll do kind of like a berry nude. Super pretty. I am going to add a liner. We're going to do, pull my liners. I feel like I lost him. Sometimes I move stuff before we get started. Okay, no liner. We're going to do liner with lipstick then. I'm going to grab another shade. So I'm just going to do a couple variants of shades. Is, do you have any sisters, Alani? I do. I have an older sister. You have an older sister? That's mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, she turns... 22 in December. Aww. And I turned 20. <laughs> oh, awesome. So you guys are two years apart. Mm -hmm. Is she into makeup at all? She loves makeup. She <laughs> does. So she's like the makeup y, mm -hmm. girly one. You seem girly, though. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is MAC. This is the shade Verve. This is a really fantastic sort of pinky nude. So we're gonna do this on the outside to kind of do like an ombre lip. And this is such a pretty color. I love the shade of it, but it looks really good on Alani. So we're just gonna outline her lips with this. So the I like lip liner, just if I want to add some longevity, but other than that, it is, it's not necessary for a look. You can just use different shades of lipstick if you want kind of an ombre look. This is super pretty. Okay, so that's, I did that all around the perimeter of the lips, and then we are going to go in with like a nude color, and I'm going to mix it with sort of that berry color. Okay. So 
we'll do this on the inner parts of the lips. I love sort of an ombre lip for a natural look. I just feel like it's really pretty and it gives more life to the face. Mm -hmm. Do you wear gloss at all? No, I usually only wear chapstick. <laughs> What's your favorite chapstick? Burt's Bees. Burt's Bees? That's a good one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, and sometimes I'll use, like, their, like, little tiny little tint um, chapsticks, but that's about it. <laughs> when you're feeling fancy. Yeah. That's awesome. They have pretty tints. I've seen them before. Mm -hmm. I feel like Burt's Bees has really good chapstick. Usually I feel like a chapstick, I don't know. I feel like that chapstick isn't as hydrating on me mm -hmm. as, like, everyone says it is. I don't like it. Like, I just will put on lip gloss, and I feel way more hydrated than, mm -hmm. than the chapstick. But Burt's Bees well, right is now, good. I use, like, the medicated one. Oh, cute. Because of, like, the wind and, like, the colder weather coming up. So, yeah. like, that feels like the most moisturizer. It stings a little bit because it's, like, the medicated, mm -hmm. but it like feels it has, like, moisturized. Menthol in it. Yeah. Yeah. Like that minty. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, more hydrating. These, the lip balm that I'm probably going to put on you today, mm -hmm. actually, I'm going to put it on you. Um, these have, like, a little bit of that minty tingling, too, but I feel okay. like they're so hydrating. Mm -hmm. So these are the Buxom. This is the shade Dolly. So this is sort of like that pinkish tint. I love these. I feel like if I wear these, my lips never get dry. Yeah, it's windy where we live. But mm -hmm. everything gets dry once the winds come. Oh my gosh, how bad were the winds the other day? So bad. I almost couldn't walk. Like, it like blew me off my feet. Oh my gosh. Like, this is crazy. It scared my baby. We walked outside and she started crying. And she like never cried. She's like super happy. They were like, so oh, bad. <laughs> and it was just for that one day. It was so yeah. weird. <laughs> so weird. Which is good. I'd rather just be one day mm -hmm. and then go away. And then go like a whole yeah. week with like terrible winds, like the worst. all of those like big rig trucks that were falling over. Like Oh yeah, yeah. We're like we're not being dramatic insane. about it. I feel like insane. I feel like Californians are dramatic about their weather. Like, because yeah. I'm from Utah and we snow and whatever. I lived in Canada. It's like super cold there. But when I moved <laughs> here to California, look up for me I started getting notifications on my phone whenever it would rain it was like warning it's gonna rain and I'm like you have <laughs> got to be kidding these people are really? babies like and then it would like sprinkle and I'm like seriously wow. but and everyone's freaking out <laughs> yeah, because of the drizzle everyone's freaking out. but our winds are no joke like yeah it, like the semi trucks or big rigs or whatever they all fall over mm -hmm. like if it's windy they have and to that's pull what's to the scary side. it is scary it's scary to drive on the freeway last time of me freaking you but out as long as you here. like avoid them i think you're good yeah yeah because <laughs> even when it's not windy i just don't like to drive next to them because they have a tendency to fall asleep sometimes oh my gosh I yeah we just flew over on a car on our freeway right over here did you know that Jules? no oh, no that, way like, blew over onto the car when oh stay away from the big rig oh my gosh yeah. yeah kelly's in the corner she's like oh a big rig just flew over like just apparently <laughs> Yikes. It's scary. I hope. I know. I don't know how the drivers are when that happens with the way they, because they have to know whoever designs them. They just blow over. They're so top heavy. Yeah. So I hope they're. Like, okay. how do they, like, prepare for that? Like, I have no clue. <laughs> like, during their training, they're just like, stay calm if your big rig blows over. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an airplane when yeah. you watch like the warnings it's like you yeah. may tip over <laughs> you may tip over at any moment oh that is so funny you have like a pleasant voice that should be like your side <laughs> job you should make instructional videos of danger because you're so friendly it's like not scary <laughs> to listen to that's so funny it's like in movies they're like talking about the most terrible thing that could happen but they're just like but it's okay it's <laughs> fine you'll be all right in the end <laughs> <laughs> you just say it so nicely. Okay, go ahead and look forward. So what I'm doing, I am layering all the tones under her eye that I did above her eye. So we started with Ridge. We did that all the way. And then I'm moving into Suntan. And now I'm doing, we actually didn't do this on her upper eye, but I might add some. This is Magma. I had it upside down. I was trying to read it. I'm like, <laughs> this is the color Mango. No, it's the color Magma. Okay, look up. And this is a pencil brush. So pencil brushes are fantastic for shading under the eyes. They just do a really great job. 
but you want to be careful we have her under eye concealer on so um you don't want to create fallout now that we've cleaned it up so just use a little bit of shadow at the time but i'm gonna have you kind of tilt down and look forward at the camera but see how this eye is just a little bit more defined these shades aren't very dark like they're more of medium tones but it just gives the eye that really pretty definition look up again for me perfect so I like to focus it in the outer corner as I get darker and then I'll very gently swipe it inward. And I like to meet the edge of the wing over here and flick it out a little bit. Okay, perfect. And we're gonna add a little bit of shimmer because I love shimmer. So we're gonna go in with this color. This is the same color we did um, on her lids. So we're just gonna take a little bit of that. Go ahead and look up again for me. And I'm gonna put it over here just going to give her eye a little bit of shine, a little shimmer. Why not? Okay, look just forward. A little touch. Just a little touch of shimmer. Okay, now we're going to do mascara, and then we're going to go into the highlight because highlighter is just magical, and I think it's going <laughs> to look so pretty. And I feel the, the menthol. You feel the in the lips, yeah. right? <laughs> it's very pleasant. Yeah, like, like it doesn't like burn or anything. It's like just a nice little like... Just a little tingle. <laughs> I have tried, because it's a plumping gloss, it mm -hmm. like very lightly plumps. And I have tried plumping glosses before that like tingle so much it hurts. Really? <laughs> yeah, but this one is very pleasant, which means you don't get like much of a plump. Mm -hmm. I use it because I love it. They have the best colors and the, the consistency is great. The plumping is more just like a nice bonus. Yeah. If you want one that like really, really plumps your lips to the max, <laughs> these would not be the ones, but also beware because <laughs> they, really can go put, a yeah, they can be a little irritating. Okay, I'm going to have you look down. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift her lid and I am going to press her natural lashes right into these false ones with the mascara. And Alani has like perfectly curled natural lashes. Like it looks like, cause usually I will take an eyelash curler and I'll curl people's lashes before and after I put on the extensions, but your own are like perfectly curled. Like that's great. But because they're curled, I do want to make sure they are blending in nicely with these false ones. So we're just pressing them together. Okay, you were getting compliments. Liz says, <laughs> stunning. She looks like a movie star. Oh, thank you. Aw, she, right? Beautiful. <laughs> she, and then she said, I really learned something about under eye makeup. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad. I'm so excited for you to see you, Lonnie. I know. This is a big reveal. I'm going to look like a different person. Like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fun. I love this look though, like this, the way I'm doing Alani's makeup is like very much what I do on many people because although it's like definitely glam, like more so than we would, most people would do it day to day, it's very wearable. I don't think it's going to be like too much too for her. Very. Yeah. That's my favorite. I love makeup that's transformative and just can sort of tweak people's already mm -hmm. stunning features but not feel like it's a mask like oh yeah. you know what i mean so i love this like it's a burden on your face all day <laughs> yeah yeah in layering products like this like it sounds like so many steps go ahead and look mm -hmm. up but if you layer them correctly and you just apply the correct amount of product um it doesn't look too heavy I'm just gonna add a little bit of bottom mascara cake okay, and then I'm done so go ahead and look kind of down I just really I love her curly lashes so I really want to connect all of her natural lashes into the strip because that's gonna make them look more natural and I actually I feel like this one is up a little bit high so I'm gonna kind of readjust it this might feel like a little weird I'm just gonna bring it down I feel like there's a little bit of a space between your natural lashes in the strip. Is that okay? Do you need a blink? You're good. Okay. Good. Oh yeah, that looks better. So sometimes when people's eyes open, if mm -hmm. I feel like I'm just seeing space between the um, the natural lashes in the strip, that's what makes lashes look fake. I mean, it's, if people are wearing a really nice thick lash, it's like obvious they're fake, but you still want it to look real. Like, yeah. if that makes natural. sense. Do you know, yeah, like mm -hmm. natural. 
place. Julie, read Melissa's comment and okay. laugh. I love her. Okay. <laughs> I have a comment. Producer Kelly is like laughing in the corner. Okay, Alyssa says, I love how you didn't put a mask of makeup on her. You just accentuated her natural beauty. Okay, and also, <laughs> I would sell my leg for her lips. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. <laughs> All of us. You have great lips. Thank you. Melissa, you're hilarious. Producer Kelly was like dying in the corner. She's like, you have to read her comment. That's cute. I don't think I would need an extra leg, but. <laughs> She's Alania is not taking you up on your offer, Melissa. She does. But I appreciate leg. it. I'll get back to you later. <laughs> She'll think of something. <laughs> You do have great lips. <laughs> Meanwhile, people are paying good money for <laughs> nice lips. Okay. That is looking so pretty. Okay. Kind of what I do, like when, I mean, we haven't done highlighter yet, but as we start to finish, like I'll sort of step back and see, like we could add a little bit more color on her eyes and maybe we will. I'll show you guys. So st like what you guys see in the camera might be a teeny bit different than what I see just because of our lights. So it's looking pretty similar. But sometimes if I want a little bit more definition after the lashes are on and after the liner um, and after like the lips and the cheeks are on, you can really obviously see more what the completed look is. So sometimes I will then tweak things. I think um, for people that don't do eyes first, usually when you do eyes first and you're not used to it, it throws you off a little bit because, um, go ahead and close for me, because the face isn't completed, so it's hard to know. It's like people tend to go just more heavy on the eyes or not enough. Um, and so you can always tweak it when you're done. And then for me, I intentionally do. I mean, I always do eyes first on clients and usually myself, so I know what it's going to look like, but um, I like to leave little room for tweaking. So I'm taking this color. This is Magma. Um, and I'm just adding a little bit more in the corner and I'm bringing it up a little bit towards the inner parts of the face. So we used this color under the eye, but I hadn't put any on her upper lid just because I knew I wanted to do a natural look and I wanted to leave that open to play with. So see how it just kind of defines her eyes a little bit more. It's very subtle. And this is very much, this shade in the pan is almost identical to her sweater, just maybe with a tad bit more brown in it. It's like very much a maroon color, but it's very pretty and it's very, very wearable. I see this tone, this sort of maroon brown in so many makeup palettes, like even very neutral ones that aren't warm at all that always have this maroon, which just seems like it's not and like a natural color, but it really is. It can just be so stunning. We're just gonna sort of spread that on, bring it up near here. Gorgeous, okay. And I do want to add a little bit more color to the cheeks, so I'm gonna use the Hourglass palette and we're gonna add their blush. So I love Hourglass blushes so much. They just have the best finish. They're powder, but they just have a really beautiful sort of reflective glowing finish that you don't get with most powder blushes. That's why I love creams, honestly, is just because of the finish you get. It cannot be beat, it cannot be matched with powders, but Hourglass does a pretty great job. Okay, go ahead and look forward. So that just gives a little bit more glow, do a little bit more in the apples. Okay, and her skin has such a nice texture. She already has sort of a natural glow. Um, so I'm just gonna powder it a little bit I'm gonna use the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. So Laura Mercier, they also have a translucent powder. I think it is called the shade Honey. So it has more of like a golden, like slightly deeper undertone. And I ordered one, but it has not come yet. But that, and I'm sad it wasn't here today because that would be perfect mm -hmm. for Alani. But you can also use the translucent one too. Just go very light with it. So I just, I'm gonna sort of go over places that she would tend to get oily. But I'm not seeing a lot of oil right now on Alani, so I don't think I need to make her too matte. And I just really love the texture of her natural skin, so I want, I like that glowy sort of look. So I'm not gonna powder much, but we probably will do a setting spray. Okay, so we are gonna do Becca powder. I really love the shade Processo Pop. This is like a really, really pretty gold. So we're just gonna go in with a little bit of that. 
super pretty. And this is a great shade because for Alani because has like a little bit more richness than like the champagne pop does or something with a little bit more of that deeper gold so it's gonna pull really beautifully with her skin tone and i'm just gonna take this cute little baby brush just do a little bit of highlighting on her nose and the inner corners of the eyes i love to highlight the inner corners of the eyes i think it's so pretty all right let's give her a little Tad more gloss. Why not? <laughs> Why not? This color Dolly, this is like the prettiest pink. It's sort of like a cool berry toned pink, but I love it. I've been loving it lately. I feel like it goes really well with like fall tones. Okay, just doing that gloss like right in the center of the face. Okay. Let's, um, we'll have Kelly flash Alani's before video so you guys can have a refresher of her before. And then, then we'll show Alani, we'll do the big reveal. <laughs> if you guys have any questions or any comments, drop them now because um, there's like definitely a lag. There's like a couple minutes la a lag when you guys drop a comment between when we see them. So I want to make sure I see them before we sign off. Bryn Scott said, hi, you are really good at makeup. Oh, thank you, Bryn. Mm -hmm. So sweet. Okay, did we get the before, Kels? All right, Alani, are you ready? I am. Okay. <laughs> Me too. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. So I have never pretty. worn makeup, so this is just so weird to me. I know. It's probably <laughs> definitely, like, different. You look stunning. It's a lot oh, of makeup, it but it still, it looks very natural. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> you look so pretty. How do the lashes feel now that you've had them on for, like, a bit? They don't feel too, like, excessive. Like, yeah. they're not too much extra weight. Good. Yeah, they probably feel still good. aware of them, but they look great. Yeah. You look stunning. Thank you. You look so pretty. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Yay! Well, thank you for being my model. Yes, of you course. You are so great. <laughs> and thank you guys. We love those of you guys that join us live. Mm -hmm. And we also are grateful for you guys to watch the replay. Um, if you liked today's video, I do two live streams a week where I do full face tutorials or little mini tutorials. So make sure you are subscribed and turn on the notifications so that you know when we go live. And I'll see you guys next week.